Hello! Um, in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at how to light your scene in Source Filmmaker. So, as you can see I have a pretty basic scene set up with Spring Shop and just some random background that I found. Uh, I'll just position his ears a little bit better, but overall that's how your scene should look like. Um, we're not going to be using any color corrections or post, uh, po or post edit or like Photoshop edits and stuff, we'll be doing everything straight in Sorcerer Maker. So, first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on the screen and select render settings. In another depth of field, we're gonna select something like 32, and the motion blur, we're gonna select 16. This will make all the shadows and blurriness um, generally in better quality than the camera settings. Then, a camera. There will be another tutorial that's dedicated only to camera, but we can just quickly do a few things to make the scene look better, so we're gonna go to SSAOR radius and get it all the way up, SSAO strength all the way up, SSAO bias all the way down, and then with focal distance we're going to select where we want to focus, I'm going to select on his mask, and then aperture all the way up. Immediately that creates a better um, scene, you can see the background is blurred, He's blurred a little bit and only his mask is visible. If you want to, you can right click on aperture and select remap slider range. As you see, I have it remapped from to 15, you will probably have it at 10. Um, you can go to 20, even 30 in some cases, but I would generally suggest to bump it up to 15 or 20. Because if we, for example, did it for 10, start that, you can see it's not blurred all the way. If we bump it up to 20, you can see it's very very blurry and even a bit too blurry hence why we're going to leave it at 15 but this depends on your scene sometimes 10 is enough sometimes 5 is enough sometimes you need 20 sometimes you need 30 if you want to but okay we have the scene first what we're going to do and then we're going to disable the general light and our first light is going to be our key light this is going to be the light that lights up the entire scene like the main light of your scene scale that a bit down Get the radius a bit up, and from from what we know, atmosphere layer in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is pretty greenish. If it was, for example, Five Nights at Freddy's 1, then it would be more bluish. In Five Nights at Freddy's 2, from what I've seen, it would be more orange, and Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the location would be way, way bluish. So, just little slight adjustments to make it a bit green, but not unrealistic green. I think this would be fun good enough and what the radius will do is it's going to make sure that it covers every single like crevice and it's not very sharp then what we can do is we can enable volumetrics we don't want them a lot because you can see this is very very bad now so we're literally just going to have them on maybe 0, zero 001 that's still a bit too much yeah, I think this will be good Right, after you got your main light, your key light, you're going to look where other light sources are in this scene. I can see there's a doorway here, so we can get a light coming from the doorway, which is going to sh simulate that there's light going through the other room into this room. Uh, doesn't look too bad, but it's way too obvious. And here we can have a bigger volumetric to show that there's, a, there's another light coming. And we can make it... Let's try again orange. Yeah, we can imagine, or the viewer can imagine that there is probably a lamp somewhere here and it's casting an orange or more like yellowish color into this scene. What else can we see? There is some lights over here, so because the audience can't see them, you can fake it a little bit, but generally try to get your lights from where the from the light source sources that are visible. So if there's a lamp here, there's a lamp there. We can imagine that there's a lamp over him. Scale that down. Radius a little bit. Make it orange. And we can try to get some volumetrics. Like a really really small number. And now this will simulate there's a light being cast from over him. 
Right, what else can we see? We can see there's Chica here. Chica usually has the orange glow from her eye, so we can add that orange glow. Uh, we don't want this to reflect, so... Maybe try max distance and Farziaten. Yep, there we go. Make it orange. Radius. Okay, maybe no radius for this one. We also wanted to eliminate uh, to be on the inside. But to make it on the inside, we probably need a different light. Just put it in there, make it big, and now find what will work for. Uh, I think we're gonna have to move and I need some reflections, so let's just get rid of that thing at the back. Actually, maybe since we're doing it, maybe we can do it here. Uh, it's nearly all just about experimenting with these free sliders to make sure that it's not going over, but that seems a bit hard. But, oh, there we go. Yeah, that should be fine. But because there's a light here, the light from here should be coming over and being cast. If I put the camera in, you can see that it's being cast on Springtrap. Right. After we let this save, after we got the light, we can see that it sort of falls on the back of him. But well, this could work. I think we should move it a little bit to the side to make it more noticeable. You can't see that it's on this side and not on this side from the camera, but it still gives up a nice effect. Now let's try to get the color to be this similar to this. A little bit of radius. And that's already good looking looking good. We can have a rim light on this side because it looks a bit dark. You always have you, you have to try to remember that not everything is completely black. When you're making your posters and there is like a general light coming from somewhere, it will never there will never be spaces that are purely black, so always try to fill up at least with some light. Uh, this we should move a little bit here. Get the intensity down, make it greenish, like so, bit of radius, and that's that's looking pretty good, although I think if there's light coming from here there should be a little bit more around this, so we can have another one, just loosely position it somewhere and turn it way down. Make it orange. Maybe some this. And I think this is looking good. There is a little bit of black in here though, so let's try and quickly fill this up. Some very, very low green. There we go. Um, that's it basically. Those are the general rules you should follow when making lighting for your scene. Remember, always try to base it from somewhere that there is a light source, so it's never loosely based. Like, for example... Uh, I'm just gonna remove this for a second. If we made some... I don't know. Let's make this side red. Let's make it a red ring light. radius and let's change this no. No. let's change this room light to red as well well this looks cool it doesn't really make sense because there's nothing in the entire scene that can give up a red light so usually try to avoid this stick with where light sources are if you wanted to have this red look, then maybe add, I don't know, uh, maybe add like a, hmm, an alarm somewhere visible and make light come from it. And this will show that there's an alarm, there's a red light, 
Hence why there's red on his side. So yeah, that would basically be it. See ya for the next tutorial.